Hi everybody, it's Paula here from the Excel Club and welcome to this week's learning resource and learn and earn activity. This week we're going to look at the sum product function in Excel and we're going to go from a very basic example to some more advanced examples rather quickly. At the end of this video tutorial, I will give you details of the learn and earn activity. Now you can find out more in the blog post as well as I've linked to the, the blog post below the video if you're watching on YouTube. And if you stay tuned to the end of the video, you can find out how you can earn by participating in the Excel activity at the end of this video. So let's look at the basic sum product function. The basic sum product function works by taking values, multiplying them against each other, and then adding these values together to get the product. Let's look at an example. We have a table here with products, units sold, and cost price. And we want to get the total cost price. Now we can very easily take our units sold and multiply it by our cost price. And then we can fill this formula down and we can add all of them values together. And that will give us our total cost price. But there's seven formulas there and we can do it in one step using sum product. So if we say sum product and bring up our sum product function, it looks for an array one and an array two. And what it'll do is multiply one array by another. Now the word array can be scary, but it really just means a range. Array formulas are, can be quite complex in Excel and they're entered using shift and enter, but some product has been built to work specifically with arrays. So array one is our units sold and array two is our cost price. We can then close the bracket and it will take the values, multiply them by each other row by row, and then add all of these values together. And we can see we get the same value as we should do for our total cost. So that's a very basic example of some product. Now, another example would be for something a little bit more different. Let's say you wanted to get the character count of all of the cells here, the text within the cells. Well, what we could do is we could use len to get the character count for each cell. We could then get it for all of the cells, fill the formula down and add it together and we can see that we get 54. So the character count of the text in all of these cells is 54. Now we can use, the, use some product to solve this exact same product. And we can do it by combining it with the len function. And then just selecting the text items as our array. Now in this case, we will need to close the bracket twice because we have the length function in there, which only the first bracket closes for length and the second sum product. And we can see there that we have quickly counted all the characters of text by combining sum product with length. Our third example now, we are going to look at summing with a criteria using sum product. Now I know we can use sum if to sum with one criteria and sum if s to sum with multiple criteria, but there's often times where you need to use sum product. We have again a table of data and our units sold. And we want to get the total units sold for whatever product is listed in this cell here. Let's start with our, su with our sum product function. So we'll bring up sum product. Now I'm going to put in the formula and then I will explain the formula to you. First of all, you start with two minuses. Then you take your first array. So we want to check and see with this array if it is equal to our product. Then when we have the trues or falses for that, because that's a logical test, what we want to do is we want to take these trues or falses and we want to, when they are trues, we want to multiply them by the unit sold and then add these values together. You know trues and falses normally give a zero and one. These are Boolean logical statements and you would have learned this when you were learning about logical functions and if statements in Excel. 
But in this case, what happens is we get some trues and some falses for this value here. But these trues and falses are not converted to a number in this particular circumstance. Let's have a walkthrough of this formula. If we go to our formulas tab and we bring up evaluate formula. First of all, evaluate formula is checking to see what the value of cell D2 is and to see then if it is equal to, we see down here, if it is equal to product A. So this test should return a load of trues and falses, in which it does. Now you can see these are in a curly bracket, you can hardly see it there, but they're in a curly bracket. So this some product automatically puts in your curly brackets, representing the array formula. If we go to evaluate for the next step, we can then see that these trues and falses stay as trues and falses. They don't appear to convert to ones and zeros. So how did we get the answer? Well, if they don't convert to ones and zeros, the use of the double minus converts trues and falses to ones and zeros. If we were to walk through this formula, this is how it works. We take our our cell, our criteria cell, and we check and see if this criteria cell is equal to the product cell. Now I'm going to lock in the criteria because when I fill this formula down, I want to get all the trues and falses. So there's all our trues and falses, and this is what we've seen in the evaluate screen. Now these trues and falses often represent ones and zeros, but in this case they aren't because of the way it's pulling in the formula. So most often when you're using some product, in this case, you need to put in a minus. Now if we take our true result and just add a zero to it, we can see the one zero behind it in, in this way. Then what the formula does is it takes our unit sold, so I'm just going to fill our unit sold down, and then it multiplies our trues by our unit sold, which I'm going to fill down to, and then it sums all of the values together. And that's how the sum product is actually working in this case. Okay, let's hop into another example. In this example, we want to rank the unit sold by grouping of product. Let's just put in a filter here for a moment to show you exactly what I mean. Okay, filters are in and we will pull up one product. We'll just pull up product A. And we want to rank this lowest value. This um, last one down here is, would be second and the top one would be the highest value. And we want to rank them based on this. So we need to kind of place a filter on the data so we can rank just by this order but within the whole table for all of the products. Now you can do this using the sum product. So let's put in our sum product function and our sum product function is looking for our array. So our array one, we are going to test and see is the product and I'm going to lock this in. Does it equal to our current product? Now, if it does e equal to our current product, so we will get our trues and falses, our ones and zeros there. We want to do another test, and we want to test and see if our unit sold value is less than all of the units sold for that particular grouping. So the ones and zeros will identify the grouping, and I'm gonna F4 to lock that value in and close the bracket and close the bracket again. Now, in this case, if our product A is not the case and we have loads of zeros, this is going to return a result of zero. So we need to add one to the end to get a ranking starting with one instead of zero. Now, if we bring up just product A, we can see that we have ranked these values. So we have the highest as one, 
we have the lowest as three and in the middle as number two and we can see the ranking there and we can see if we pull up any product that they have been ranked individually. Now let's have a look at this in the evaluate formula. So in evaluate formula it tests to see if it's equal to cell A3. So we press evaluate here and we see we get all our trues and falses. So it's going through the whole column. Now the third one down, or the second one down we see is true, which is this product B here. So that's that first true there. And that's how it's identified this one. We see there's no other trues within here. Now if we evaluate this, it moves into the second test. And again, it'll do exactly the same. We'll have a, z a series of z trues and falses. Now in this case, Excel recognizes these as ones and zeros because both sides of the argument are in Boolean format. So if we press evaluate, we can see we have a whole load of zeros here. And then we're going to, because we're starting the ranking with one, we have plus one to give us the start with a lower value of one. And that is how you can use some product to create a ranking by a particular grouping. Let's have a look at another example. And in this example, what we want to do is we want to count and see how many of these keywords appear within our feedback statement. This is an exercise that would be often carried out by marketeers and also by data analysts. So we want to count how many times the keyword Excel or Thank You or Power BI appears within each feedback statement. These are sample feedback statements that I have received. So to do this again, because we're looking at some product, obviously we can use the sum product function. Now the trick of this sum product function is that we're going to use search and we're going to use is number. We're going to search the feedback cell for these particular keywords. If it finds them, it's a Boolean search, so it's going to be a true or false. And to turn the search into a true or false, we need to use is number. Let me put in the formula and I will show you exactly what we mean. So we're going to start with our double negative and we will select is number. So is number is going to give a series of true or false results. So what are we going to see if it's a number? Well, if we put in search, it's going to ask us to find text. And we've used some product, so we can use an array. So I'm going to select our table of keywords. After this, it says within what text are we searching this for? So I'm searching for it in my feedback cell. And I'm searching for, for it starting from the first character in the text string. Now I'm just going to close that bracket and I have to close the bracket for is number and we have a third close bracket for some product. So what's going to happen here? It is going to first search and find and when it search and finds it will give it a number. The, this number will then be converted tr to a true and false which will then be converted back to a one and zero. Now I'm going to fill this down and let's have a look. So I love Excel. Well, the keyword Excel is mentioned. Thank you and Power BI is not. This course was really good. None of the keywords. Thank you for your Excel articles and videos. So I have two keywords. I've got thank you and I have Excel. And in the third one we have, you have helped me learn Power BI, thank you. So we have both thank you and Power BI. So how is this formula working? Well, let's go through our evaluate formula. And first of all, it is looking at cell A2. So it's looking at the text cell and it's going to evaluate the text cell to see if it contains any of these words. If it contains any of these words, it returns either a number or a value. The value being that it's not them words. So there's three words that it's found in here. Two of them are values, so they're kind of errors. It's then taking these errors and these aren't numbers. So this will be given a false and the number will be given a true. 
So the, the number doesn't really matter. The fact is we can convert that to true and false. Then by adding in the double minuses, we can convert these to ones and zeros. We see we've one tree, or we've one true, and we have two falses. So we will get a value of one. So that is a few examples for you now for the sum product function. Next, I'm going to show you the learning activity that you have. Now, if you hop over to the website, you can copy this table of data. Now, next week, in the I will update the blog post. So do make sure you've signed up to the newsletter so you get notification when the blog post has been updated with the solutions. In the meantime, it, what you need to do to, to partake in the learn and earn activity is ensure that you have a Steam account, which you will find a link to also in my blog post. Then all you need to do is carry out this particular activity. So we have a products table and a cost price and we are going to bundle products together for a sales price. And we want to be able to calculate the cost price based on whether something is in a particular bundle or not. So for example, bundle one, we would need a cost price of the 40, the 25 and the 29, which would be 94. We want to calculate these values down here and we want to do it using the sum product function. Your challenge is to prepare that solution and in the comment section of the blog post, put in the formula that you would use. Feel free to also leave your comments and your feedback on this video and article. And again, hop over to the article and you'll find out all the details of how you can partake in this learn and earn activity. Please don't post your solutions at the end of the YouTube video. If you liked this video, please do like and subscribe. And again, when you go over to the website, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks very much for watching this video. Goodbye now.